Good morning. And welcome to our worship on this 13th Sunday after Trinity. And welcome to all of you here in the chapel, of course, to all of you watching at home on Channel 64, and to all of you watching on Facebook Live. I'm Pastor Keith Wise, and it's my privilege to be the pastor and chaplain here at the Lutheran Church of the Good Shepherd and the Good Shepherd community of Sauk Rapids, Minnesota. For all of you liturgy geeks out there, um, the bulletin says the 13th Sunday after Trinity, and I'm dressed in red because I told the sacristans that we were going to celebrate the martyrdom of St. John the Baptist. Well, I messed that up really good. So we're going to celebrate the 13th Sunday after Trinity dressed in red. So instead of green. So that's what, why that is. Our flowers today are provided by Irene Hagberg. Thank you, Irene, for beautifying our worship. Bible study starts again this Wednesday at 2 p.m. Apartment residents as well as patio home residents are welcome to join us. Our Wednesday communion service with um, less ceremony and attempt at more like it used to be is off and running to which apartment folks are welcome to come again this Wednesday. So we're getting that going as well. Um, believe it or not, I made two mistakes at least this week. And the citation to the gospel is not St. Luke chapter 9. It's actually St. Matthew chapter 8, 23 through 27. So if, if you need to change that, do so, but I will announce it at the beginning. Um, in our prayers uh, for today, um, among the beloved dead, the Ashley for whom we pray is the daughter of one of Deanne's longtime friends from Texas who died from COVID this past weekend. So, It is the 13th Sunday after Pentecost, and our theme for our sermon today comes from our gospel from Matthew chapter 8. Who can this be? So I invite you to prayer while I say my prayers at the altar, and then we will begin with the invocation and confession and absolution. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I will go to the altar of God, to God my exceeding joy. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end, amen. Take away from us our iniquities, we beseech thee, O Lord that with pure minds we may be made worthy to enter into the Holy of Holies. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Here we beseech thee, O Lord, the prayers of thy people, and spare those who confess their sins unto thee, that thou mayst bestow upon us both pardon and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God our Father. I confess to God Almighty, before the whole company of heaven, 
and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed by my fault, by my own fault, by my own most grievous fault. Wherefore, I pray God Almighty to be merciful to me, forgive me all my sins, and bring me to everlasting life. Amen. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our opening hymn is eternal Father strong to save. rise before you like incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Amen. As the fragrance of our prayers fills your holy temple, may our prayers fill your heart and your ears and soul, that you may answer us in grace and mercy according to our need and your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ, whose voice the waters heard, and hushed them at the rage I word, acted on the foaming deep, and calm amidst its rage did keep. O oh, hear us when we cry to thee for those in peril on the Confusion, peace, O oh, hear us when we cry to thee for those in peril on the sea. O oh, Trinity of love and power, O oh, shield in dangers, how from rock and tempest, fire and foe, protect them wheresoe'er they go. Thus evermore shall rise to thee, glad praise from land and air and sea. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, give unto us an increase of faith, hope, and love, 
that we may obtain what you promise. Make us to love that which you command. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light unto my path. Enlighten our ways unto everlasting life through the living word, Jesus Christ, our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Cleanse my mind and my heart and my lips, almighty God, that I may worthily proclaim your holy word through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from Joshua chapter 4. And it came to pass when all the people had completely crossed over the Jordan that the Lord spoke to Joshua, saying, Take for yourselves twelve men from the people, one man from every tribe, and command them, saying, Take for yourselves twelve stones from here, out of the midst of the Jordan, from the place where the priest's feet stood firm. You shall carry them over with you and leave them in the lodging place where you lodge tonight. Then Joshua called the twelve men whom he had appointed from the children of Israel, one man from every tribe. And Joshua said to them, Cross over before the ark of the Lord your God into the midst of the Jordan, and each one of you take up a stone on his shoulder according to the number of the tribes of the children of Israel, that this may be a sign among you when your children ask in time to come, saying, What do these stones mean to you? Then you shall answer them that the waters of the Jordan were cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord when it crossed over Jordan. The waters of the Jordan were cut off. And these stones shall be for a memorial to the children of Israel forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the eighth chapter. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Now, when Jesus got into a boat, his disciples followed him. And suddenly a great tempest arose on the sea, so that the boat was covered with the waves. But he was asleep. Then his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we are perishing. But he said to them, Why are you fearful, O you of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great call. So the men marveled, saying, Who can this be, that even the wind and the way, even the wind and the sea obey him? This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. By the gospel word today, may our sin be done away through Christ our Lord. Amen. We confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. 
The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in thy sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. From Psalm 146, Happy is he who has the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God, who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them who keeps truth forever. Amen. Who can this be that even the winds and the sea obey him? The disciples asked. Who can this be indeed? So far, these disciples have heard and seen Jesus preach the Sermon on the Mount. They have seen him heal a centurion's son from hundreds of miles away without going to him, seeing him, or touching him. They have seen him heal St. Peter's mother by touching her, and the fever leaves her, and she feels well enough to get up and be a good hostess. They have seen Jesus cure countless sick, injured, maimed, and lame people. They have seen him drive out more demons than you can count in one single day. But it's this thing, this thing in the gospel today, Jesus calming the storm out on the sea by rebuking it. This is the thing that makes them ask, who can this be? In their hearts, they already have an idea of who Jesus is. They have the beginnings of faith there, even if it is still little and unformed and weak and perhaps partly misformed. They have an idea who Jesus is, Because when the going gets tough out on the water, they all turn to him. Lord, save us, we are perishing. And because he is who he is, Jesus rises up, answers their prayer, rebukes the wind, the sea, and the storm, and restores the peace for those disciples with their little weak faith. 
But it's then that that question comes, who can this be? that even the winds and the sea obey him. Before we directly answer that question, I have some questions for you. It took a storm on the Sea of Galilee and almost dying to turn those disciples to Jesus in prayer. After everything they'd seen and witnesses that witnessed, that's what it took to turn them to Jesus in prayer. What does it finally take to turn you to Jesus in prayer? Would a storm out in the middle of the sea in a leaky, sinking boat do it for you? How much preaching and teaching and blessing from God himself poured down upon your body, heart, and soul does it take to turn you to Jesus in prayer? How much struggle against this evil world does it take to turn you to Jesus? How much pain and how much suffering and how much money spent on your failing health does it take to turn you to Jesus in prayer? How many failures in your attempts to do things you used to do? How much disappointment in the divisions in your family does it take? How much helplessness to make your life what you wish it really could be? How much does it take to finally turn you to the Lord in prayer and say to Jesus what those disciples did? Lord, save us. Lord, save me. I'm dying here. We all try to handle things ourselves. I'm preaching to myself as much as I'm preaching to you. And for some reason, especially we Americans have made it a characteristic to be admired to pull yourself up by your own bootstraps, which really means you're on your own here, buddy. You can handle that yourself. You don't need help, and you ain't getting none from me. But before we're good Americans, we are always faithful Christians. And Jesus has promised Jesus, the man asleep in the boat in the gospel today who woke up and calmed the storm on the sea, Jesus has promised to handle everything for you. He's promised to handle absolutely everything for all of us, even to the point of handling our sins and their consequences for us. Sins like thinking we can do this by ourselves. Sins like thinking, well, he just needs to pull himself up by his bootstraps. He's too lazy. That's why he can't get a job. Jesus has promised to handle those sins too by dying on the cross. It seems a little drastic. It seems a lot drastic. But drastic is what is called for when it comes to our selfishness and our sin. St. Paul puts it so very eloquently in Romans. He says, I find then a law that evil is present within me 
the one who wills to do good. For I delight in the law of God according to the inward man, but I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. That is what makes you try to take it all on yourself, to carry the burden alone, to hold it on your own shoulders, not to share your troubles with anyone else. That sin which runs through your blood. And then he says, oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? And then comes the glorious answer. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. There's your deliverance from death out on a boat in the ocean, caught up in the struggles of your life, deep in sin so far you could never get out. Jesus is your deliverer. Yes, you should struggle against your sin even though it still runs in your blood. The Holy Spirit leads you to do that. But you, as you struggle against your sin, should never expect to win. Not on your own. But thanks be to God, Jesus has already won. He has won the battle on the cross. So don't wait till your boat is almost full of water before you turn to Jesus in prayer. Don't wait until the struggle and the pain and the disappointment and the failures and the helplessness are all too much for you to bear. Don't wait. Turn to Jesus now, turn to him in prayer and he will save you because he has saved you. He will save you just like he saved those disciples out on the sea because the answer to their question is as profound as it is simple. Who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? Well, he is the maker of the wind and the beach and the sand and the trees. He is the God of the storm and the sea, and he is Lord over you and me. That's who he is. So repent of trying to keep things together all by yourself. It's what the church is here for, the body of Christ. Some of us are the thumbs and the big toes and the hairy noses. Some of you are the beautiful faces. And some are the shining feet of the gospel. Some of the beating heart of the body of Christ. None of us are alone. So don't bear your burdens alone. Rejoice with those who rejoice, St. Paul says. Weep with those who weep. And pray to the Lord when the burdens get too much to bear. And repent of keeping them all to yourself. Quit acting like you can hide your problems from Jesus and he won't know. Yeah, when that's you on the boat and it's sinking, oh, time for secrets is over. And that time is now. So repent. Pray to Jesus. Oh, he may be taking a nap. But even as he sleeps, as the gospel today shows us, he's always more than ready to answer your prayers. He knows your troubles and is ready at a moment's notice to stand up 
and deliver you and save you from danger to life and limb. The disciples knew they were going to die if Jesus didn't do something that evening. And the gospel teaches us the same thing about ourselves. We will all die if Jesus doesn't do something. And we will die not just bodily, but spiritually as well, and be separated from our God forever if Jesus does not do something drastic to save us today. Well, praise God, he has done something drastic. He has died on the cross, probably the most drastic action any man has ever taken, the most drastic action God has ever taken for the sake of your body and soul. And it all began before time, but for us it began when for us man and for our salvation Jesus came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and in our flesh, in your flesh and mine, he took on your sins and made them your own. He took on your struggles and your pain. He took on your disappointments and your failures. He took on your sins on his own shoulders, carried them all the way to the cross of Calvary, and there for our sake offered himself once and for all the ultimate sacrifice for it all in order to deliver you from that which would otherwise kill you. So do, so do not hesitate to pray as the disciples prayed, Lord, save us. We are perishing. Lord, help me. I'm dying here. Today, make that prayer your prayer. Make it your prayer of contrition, of true sorrow over your sins, not just getting caught in them. Make that your prayer in striving for holiness, because you cannot do it on your own. Make it your prayer of total trust in Jesus to restore your life after he drowns the sinner in you in the waters of baptism to raise you up to new life so that you will never, ever perish because of his salvation. Pray, Lord, save me, I am dying here. And Jesus' answer to that prayer will always be the same. No matter what it is that's trying to kill you at the moment, he will say what he said to the water that evening and to the wind and the waves. What St. Mark tells us about this episode, he will say, peace, be still. And the wind and the waves that threaten you will do just that. He will say to your frightened soul and your terrified conscience and your worried heart, peace, be still. And they will do just that. He will say, peace, be still every time you pray, pray. And by that holy answer to your prayer, he will reveal to you personally what he revealed by his words 
to the disciples that evening out on the boat when they said, who can this be? that even the wind and the sea obey him. Well, he is the maker of the wind and the sea and the beach and the sand and the trees. He is the God of the storm and the sea, and he is Lord over you and me. Come to save us, to live with him forever where there are no storms. No raging seas, no dangerous waves, no sins, no disappointments, no health problems, no troubles. No need to pray, Lord, save me, I'm dying here, but to bring us where we will live forever with him. Who is this whom even the wind and the waves and the sea and the storm obey? You ask who this may be? Lord Sabaoth is he, Jesus Christ, our mighty Lord, the Son of God and Savior of our souls, not just for folks on boats, but for folks at Good Shepherd and all over the world too. So in addition to our usual prayer today, we're going to pray, Lord, save us. We're dying here. Come, Lord Jesus, come quickly. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray that God would grant us grace to see in Jesus our Lord who made the wind and the waves, and us too. And so in his mercy will answer all our prayers and keep us safe from danger and harm. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy, that the church in every place would always preach, teach, and pray to Jesus as our only source of help in this life and eternal salvation for the life of the world to come. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In thanksgiving for the recent rains which God so graciously poured down upon us, and in prayer for protection for those whom the storms have caused damage or danger, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy that God would protect all who are in danger from natural disasters, especially those in danger from Hurricane Ida as it heads towards the Gulf Coast, and all other natural disasters as this creation rebels against its creator. Also that God would protect and strengthen the faith of those Christians under persecution from godless infidels throughout the world, especially those under persecution from the Taliban in Afghanistan. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who live, work, and worship at Good Shepherd, that we be kept safe from all harm, protected from all evil, and live in godly love with one another, and that God would grant us repentance for our part in this COVID pandemic which he has sent upon us to chasten us in our faith and strengthen us in our dependence upon him as our only hope in hopeless times. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Joseph, our president, Tim, our governor, Kurt, our mayor, Mike, our CEO, and for all in positions of authority, that they use that authority given them by God to encourage and reward godliness and goodness and punish and curb evil in our midst as God intends. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for all who have asked for our prayers, whom we mention now in the silence of our heart.
that God would grant healing to the sick, relief to the suffering, steadfastness of faith to all, and an unshaken hope in his promises as we all carry the cross he has given us toward the life of the world to come. Let us pray to the Lord. For our beloved dead, especially our sister Ashley, that as he has promised, God would grant all of them peaceful rest with the saints in light of his heavenly mansions and raise them up in his eternal glory on the last day. And that God would comfort all those who mourn the death of loved ones with his promise of everlasting life with Christ. To let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all the saints, we give you thanks, O God, especially the Blessed Virgin Mary, her faithful spouse and guardian of Jesus, St. Joseph, St. John the Baptist, St. Monica, mother of St. Augustine of Hippo, and Rebecca, our mother in the faith, that God would grant us faith like theirs that never hesitates to turn to Jesus in our time of need. Let us pray to the Lord. These and all our prayers we lift up to you, O Heavenly Father, trusting in your mercy through your only begotten Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Amen. I will wash my hands in innocence, so I will go about your altar, O Lord, that I may proclaim with the voice of thanksgiving and tell of all your wondrous works. O Lord, may this sacrament of our Lord's precious body and blood cleanse us from all sins, strengthen our unity with you and with one another as your mystical body, through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Grant, O Lord, that this sacred communion with Christ purify us from all our sins and render your power blessing and beneficial to us. 
through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is meet and right so to do. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, who with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit are one God, one Lord, in the confession of the only true God. We worship the Trinity in person and the unity in substance of majesty co-equal. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper 
And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Remember us in your kingdom, Lord, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. O Christ, thou Lamb of God, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be made whole. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for me, preserve my body and soul from life to life everlasting. Amen. What shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, and so shall I be safe from my enemies. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for me, preserve my body and soul unto everlasting life. Amen. Grant us thy peace. Amen. the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Amen and thank you. body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins.
the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. The blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Jan, I commune to you, right? Herb? The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Amen. Amen. Thank you. May thy body, O Lord, which we have consumed, and thy blood which we have drank, cling to our souls, and bring us by the mercy and merits of Christ Jesus into salvation and everlasting life in the new heavens and the new earth. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in the true faith to life with God that has no end. Depart in peace. Amen. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endureth forever. Let us pray. Pour forth upon us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, that by your mercy you may make of one will all those whom you have fed with one heavenly food. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to God. Brothers and sisters, bow your hearts. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Almighty and merciful God, we have again worshipped in your presence and received with received both forgiveness of our many sins and the assurance of your love in Christ Jesus. We thank you for this undeserved grace and ask you to keep us in the true faith until with all your saints we inherit eternal salvation. Send your holy angels to protect us from all danger to body and soul and keep us always with Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Our closing hymn today is Day by Day. And then our postlude will be, I must tell Jesus. I struggle day by day. 
Thank you for joining us. God bless each and every one of you. Your virtual handshake, since real ones are still discouraged, if not completely disallowed. Uh, remember worship on Wednesday. It's your turn again. Um, we're going to try in September to alternate between apartments and nursing home. If there turns out not to be much interest really in the nursing home, we'll just make that another apartment's option all the time. But maybe there will be. And eventually, it will be open to everybody all the time. Um, was, oh, uh, expect a calendar and a pastoral letter from me from for the month of September. I've said it, now I have to do it. So... Uh, <laughs> It's even recorded, so it must happen now. Um, some things to just uh, talk to you about and let you know about. Uh, and that's it. Our postlude hymn is I Must Tell Jesus, another hymn about prayer. You may stay and pray and or sing as long, but no, you can't sing. I can't say that. You may stay and pray as long as you desire or you may go whenever you desire. God bless you and have a wonderful day. Amen. Amen. Jesus, Jesus.
alone I must tell Jesus all of my troubles he is a kind compassionate friend if I but ask him he will deliver he my make of my troubles quickly and end I must tell Jesus I must tell Jesus I cannot bear these burdens alone I must tell Jesus I must tell Jesus Jesus will help me, Jesus alone. Tempted and tired, I need a great Savior, one who can help my burdens to bear. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, he wonderful day.
should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer.